Good morning, I'm Jasmine Anderson. Business is booming for Long Island's first pot shop. So when and where will other recreational stores open? Macy Eglund and Serena Triangle have the story you'll see only in Newsday. We are starting to see some of our first licensed recreational pot shops open up on Long Island. The first to open its doors, experiencing some big business right now. Serena Trangle has been looking into this first location in Farmingdale. What have they been telling you about the first couple weeks of business? They've been saying it's extremely busy. For the first two and a half weeks, there was a line of folks waiting to get in. They had to increase their staff, going from about 15 to 26 people to meet demand. Um, they're seeing an average of about 1,100 people a day, spending an average of $100. So we have some delivery services on Long Island. This lo uh, Farmingdale location being the first brick and mortar store, is that affecting the delivery services at all? They say they're still going strong and doing well. Um, one delivery service is based out of Queens and they also are increasing their headcount to meet demand. They started with about three people, now have close to 12 and are looking to get to 35. Uh, the other delivery service is based out of Albany. They have seen a slight decrease, but say things are still going quite well. Okay, so looking to the future as far as potentially more recreational pot shops on Long Island, where are we at in that process right now? So there are 35 other companies that are are licensed to open a recreational dispensary on Long Island. Um, they have struggled to find locations. Many communities have chosen not to allow pot shops. Four towns allow them, Babylon, Brookhaven, Riverhead, and Southampton, um, although there are zoning restrictions that can make it complicated for people to find locations. Okay, but we could potentially in the future see a few more brick and mortar locations in those four towns you mentioned. Correct. Okay, gotcha. All right, good information. Thank you, Serena. Serena Macy, thank you. Read more on this story on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Only a Newsday, a Las Vegas Sands executive is facing felony weapons charges here on the island. Court papers show police raided Michael Lavoff's old Westbury home. They recovered two loaded pistols and hollow point bullets. We're told he had no permit for the guns. Lavoff is a senior vice president with Sands. He's played an active role in the company's push to develop a $4 billion casino at the Nassau Coliseum. The Nassau County executive is firing back at a call to house migrants at the Nassau Coliseum. It comes from the Queens Borough president. He says the Uniondale Arena should be among the city's options. Bruce Blakeman says there's no plan whatsoever to house migrants in the county. Nassau County is not a sanctuary county. We are not inviting immigrants and migrants into the county that are here from south of the border and not using the proper and normal channels that have been used in the past. Nassau residents protested the migrant tent city that opened this week on the county's border at Creedmoor Psychiatric Center in Queens Village. Weeks from the anniversary of 9-11, the alleged mastermind of the attacks and his fellow defendants may never face the death penalty. The Associated Press obtained a letter from the FBI and Pentagon sent to the victims' families. It says a plea deal is being considered. The prosecution of the 9-11 defendants at Guantanamo Bay has been delayed for years. We're learning more about the deadly bacteria that killed a man in Suffolk. County health officials say the dead man who tested positive for fibrosis was 55 years old and lived in Brookhaven. We're told he had a leg wound in an underlying health condition. The bacteria is tied to seawater and raw shellfish. New York City just joined Long Island municipalities in banning government employees from downloading TikTok. The mayor cites a security threat posed by the platform's owner, Chinese tech giant ByteDance. Nassau and Suffolk counties, along with the town of North Hempstead, have already banned the app. Oyster Bay is exploring a similar restriction. With COVID numbers creeping back up on the island, a new report on kids and vaccines. The CDC says vaccines help protect young children against having to seek emergency treatment for the virus. Researchers also found the shot's effectiveness wanes over time. The Giants preseason continues tonight. Is brought to you by PC Richard and Son. They are off the beaten path and have some of the best food. Elisa DiStefano and Maria Elena Martinez check out hidden restaurants in today's Feed Me TV. Today 
today's assignment, Hidden Restaurants. Our food writer, Maria Lena Martinez, had me searching for Farm Country Kitchen here in Riverhead. I finally found it, so let's go check it out. It is certainly hidden. Tucked away on West Main Street and behind a building, you'd never imagine you were steps away from this. Wow, I was not expecting this. Is this incredible? Like, how would you even know that this is behind here? How beautiful. That's the Peconic River. We're all set up with all their popular places. It's not just the view, it's the food tip. All right, let's go have some lunch. What a spread. Everything looks so fresh and delicious. There's a reason it's called Farm Country Kitchen. There you go. It is all really beautiful food, a lot of it locally sourced in this absolutely incredible place. They are known for their sandwiches. They're known for their salad. I'm going to dig into this. Mm. <laughs> How could it be bad? It's fried chicken on fried eggplant. Mm. And you get to sit in this incredible garden and listen to reggae and hang. So this is not the only hidden restaurant. There are many, and a couple of the others that I particularly love are Stellina, which is in Oyster Bay. It's off South Street, but it's behind in a parking lot. You have to look for a little tiny Stellina sign, and if you find it, you're really gonna be happy with your lunch. The other is Swell Taco in Babylon, and they are behind Main Street. Any here for taco? Oh my God, all of them? <laughs> This looks too good to leave any behind, so Sweet. I'm going to try the famous farm bowl. The farm bowl is with quinoa, avocado, salmon, obviously. I will try what looks like a really, really delicious rich, mm. which is the pasta roberta. It's so good. So this good. This place is worth searching for. For Newsday TV, Elisa DiStefano. Beautiful views, and of course, the food is great. For more on hidden restaurants, go to Newsday.com, click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. In this day and age of social media and of misinformation everywhere you look, it's so critical for my work to come from a respected, trusted source where readers know they can trust it day in and day out. Newsday, covering Long Island like no one else can. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Happy Friday. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with a look at your hyperlocal seven-day forecast.